another episode of Who's Hiring, our summer series uh, where we are bringing to you local jobs um, around Galveston County area and we're going to continue today. We have four new jobs for you, we have a career tip for you, and we have other information that we just found that we would like to share. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment, let us know what you want to hear, let us know what you want to see, uh, so that we can make sure that we are bringing you the best of Whitecaps Wednesdays Who's Hiring. Again, I'm Dr. LaToya Mills. I am the coordinator for the Student Success and Career Readiness Center here at Galveston College. And I am Sharon Pagan, Career Navigator at the Applied Technical Center, but working with students from the main campus as well. Okay. So I'm going to start with an announcement, and this is for students that are in the 16 to 24 um, age range. At Workforce Solutions today, they will be doing um, a presentation called uh, for Virtual Youth Workforce Solutions and Work in Texas. It is today from 2 to 4 in the afternoon. They are going to give an overview of Workforce Solutions. They're going to discuss youth employment opportunities, even though it's the end of July. Um, still great opportunities available. They will be talking about paid internships um, and training and educational uh, opportunities. And they'll also be doing an um, overview of the website workintexas.com. So if you're available this afternoon and you want to, partici to participate in a hiring event tomorrow, um, call Jackie Felix at 713-661-3220, extension 1001, and tell her that you'd like to participate in this wonderful overview today. And then tomorrow, there will be a virtual youth hiring event from 2 to 4, um, and they're suggesting that you register and complete your profile before that begins. So, um, and, and if you're a job seeker, call Miss call Jackie Felix and talk with her and she'll send you the link. Um, if you're a vendor and are looking for, for youth 16 to 24 to work for your company, again, call Jackie Felix, 713-661-3220, extension 1001 and she will give you the link for vendors. Great job. So is there an age range for the youth? 16 to 24. Okay. 16 yes. to 24. So that's a wide gap. Yes. All right. So that's what's happening today and tomorrow. So hopefully some of our youth can take advantage of that. Um, so I'm, some of our young adults will be taking advantage of that. And thank you to Workforce Solutions for all the hard work that, the, that they are doing out there. Absolutely. So we're going to get moving into our job opportunities. Um, and I'm going to start today. So last, who's hiring, I focused on business and industry. This who's hiring, I am focusing on all my healthcare fields out there. So if you're in the field of healthcare, um, and some of these opportunities sound interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned uh, to the website's contact information. And last, who's hiring, uh, Ms. Pagan brought to us a list of the top employers in Galveston. And so I think the number one employer in Galveston we found was UTMB. Absolutely. UTMB is the number one employer in Galveston, so I went to their site to see what they have for you this week. Um, my healthcare people and my first job is going to be a patient care technician. So to all my patient care technicians, um, those are individuals who have their certificates. You probably are a continuing education student. You have a CNA, phlebotomy, um, my LVNs who are still in school and you probably want to secure some type of employment while you're still in school. Um, who else? So my medication aids my EMTs, any certificate in the healthcare field, you could apply as a patient care technician at UTMB. So this first position is a patient care tech position in the ICU. They have about four positions right now, 
two for days, two for nights. And they're looking for, again, nursing assistance, medical assistance, EMT, CNA, LVNs, um, any certificate, you would, you would be qualified for this job. Um, you have to provide technical assistance and supportive patient care to meet the needs of individuals and patients throughout the assigned areas. Um, and like I said, this assigned area is the ICU. They're starting at about um, 1223 an hour, um, and that is dependent on your experience. So if you have a six-week cert, right, a uh, six-week phlebotomy cert, a six-week CNA cert, this would be ideal, 12.23 an hour, for you to go on the UTMB website. It's utmb.jobs. utmb.jobs, you would be an external applicant. And on the face of that page, you can go through and see all the patient care tech positions that are now being um, sourced for the UTMB. This is the League City campus. Let me say that that League City campus is expot. Uh, it, expanding not expiring but expanding mm -hmm. <laughs> that campus is expanding so to all my patient care tech positions um, or students this is a great opportunity and I hope you take advantage again the website is utmb.jobs um, this is the ICU they're looking for two days two nights at 12:23 an hour um, and hopefully this will help somebody out there Thank you, Dr. Mills. You're welcome. So, one of the our uh, largest employers in Galveston is the Galveston Independent School District. So, I'm going to follow with a fantastic opportunity for HVAC students. So, um, the Galveston Independent School District, there is the job title is Child Nutrition Commercial Kitchen slash HVAC refrigeration and um, I spoke yesterday to the director of child nutrition uh, this is the person that will be hiring this individual her name is Jennifer Douglas she's delightful um, energetic warm um, I enjoy getting acquainted with her so much and um, the salary is $19.31 to $22.72 per hour. And you would go to GISD.org, click on the employment tab, view current job openings, and apply. And uh, Ms. Douglas gave me a great tip yesterday to pass on to students. And she said when you go to um, GISD.org and you're applying there's an opportunity to upload certificates and so she said you know if you've earned that level one entry cert uh, the level two intermediate or the level three advance definitely scan those in and upload those because that will put you at um, a very strong put you in a strong position I'll tell you a little bit about it um, you'll be maintaining, repairing, and installing commercial kitchen equipment. She said um, the, the, employee, the new employee will be working with coolers, freezers, ice machines, um, and Freon as well. And so that's why it's uh, very critical that students have appropriate licenses for refrigeration. Um, and she, they specifically mention on the application they're looking for students that have that Universal Environmental Protection Agency certification, the EPA certification. And while they mentioned on the um, job site that they're looking with some, someone that's got five years of experience in commercial or residential refrigeration, she it specifically states preferred and she said, you know, please don't be discouraged by That's that, good. that she's eager to talk with you, particularly if you've earned all those certificates from Galveston College and you've got that universal EPA certification. Um, she said the em prospective employee will have the opportunity to work on HVAC repair and maintenance installations. They'll be diagnosing and resolving problems um, and it is important to have good oral and written communication skills 
So you want to do a little practicing with um, myself, with Dr. Mills, with someone in your family, a friend, before you go in. Um, they're also looking for someone that is computer literate. And the other thing that it mentions on the application is how important regular attendance is. Yes. So, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity. She mentioned GISD is a great organization to work for. This person will be um, all the benefits and the retirement package is available to them. And so you've got to go in with that professional uh, mindset. Um, she said responsibilities will include creating and implementing preventative maintenance schedules for all kitchen equipment. And you've got to have the knowledge of HVAC, refrigeration repairs, maintenance, and installation techniques. Also need to be able to read and interpret blueprints, diagrams, schematics, and perform mathematical calculations related to HVAC uh, refrigeration, being able to calculate those heat load um, indexes. Uh, you'll also coordinate and work with outside contractors when warranty or major repairs are needed. And you'll have that responsibility of keeping up with equipment war warranties. Um, you'll have to maintain an inventory of district-owned tools, equipment, and materials, respond to emergency calls, and maintain proper Freon dispensing records to meet federal requirements. And so she said that they've got one person right now that's covering all wow. of, 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 you know, these demands in their division. And so she is eager to hire someone with the skills, but also with that comes in with a great attitude and will mix well with their team. She said it's a very um, cohesive team in, in child nutrition. And so, um, excellent opportunity for students with HVAC degrees. Yes, that sounds like a really well-rounded opportunity, too. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Hopefully, yeah. one of our students will get that job. Yes. All my new HVAC graduates. Yes. Okay, yes. so my last position um, is also coming from UTMB, and it's several positions as I was going in and trying to find the best opportunity for our healthcare students. Um, and I want to talk to our VE and our vocational nursing students. Um, I know we have a group of students who just graduated in May. Um, and if you've secured your, um, you passed your NCLEX and you sec have secured your license, um, I really, really would want you to go on the UTMB, utmb.jobs website, because there are a ton of LVN opportunities out there currently. A lot of them are going to be in the UTMB Corrections Units. So um, I'm seeing at least 10. You have Carol Vance Unit, the Beaumont Unit, the Kennedy Unit, uh, the Kula Unit, is it? Katula Unit, the Beeville Unit. If you are okay and that sounds like something that interests you, you can go to the UTMB website, utmb.jobs, and you can find all these positions out there um, for LBNs being hired in our correctional facilities. Their salary right now is anywhere from $38,000 to $57,000 a year. That's a great starting salary for a student with a one-year certificate. Um, so again, utmb.jobs, there are tons of LVN positions and they're looking for someone who has gra just graduated um, and they possess their current license, uh, their LVN license. Um, and this one that I'm looking at for the corrections facility says no experience required. So this could be a stepping stone, a starting place, where you can earn that nursing experience, get that hands-on training, and then expand yourself into other nursing areas. Um, that's not the position that I wanted to tell you about LVNs, but I just wanted you to know that there are a lot of VN positions out there on the UTMB website right now. So go out, check them out, uh, make yourself available, apply for as many as you can, and hopefully our LVNs 
would land a position sooner than later. And I always say you have to be flexible. It's about getting your foot in the door and making sure that you secure some experience and then we can do those things that you really, really want to do. Um, but the position that I do want to talk to you about today um, is in women's comprehend in the Women's Comprehensive Health Clinic in Clear Lake on the Clear Lake campus, and this is also another LVN position, and they are also starting anywhere from thirty-eight thousand to fifty-seven thousand dollars a year. They are looking for new graduates. Um, they're looking for students. They do want someone with some preferred experience, but students with no experience, it says, can apply, and it's not required, it's just preferred. Um, you have to have your license, so you have to have your license, um, you have to have gra graduated from an accredited institution. Um, communication skills are a bonus, so we always talk about that, how important it is to have communication skills. You will be providing direct nursing practice, and this would be ideal for someone who wants to go um, into OBGYN or women's health. This would be a great starting space for that. Um, and this, again, is in the Women's Comprehensive Health Clinic on the Clear Lake campus. Uh, that Clear Lake campus is also expanding. So UTMB is really taking over Galveston County. So they have the Galveston campus, the Clear Lake campus, the League City Vic Victory Lakes campus, um, so UTMB.jobs, if you are a LVN, CNA, RN, I even saw some search tech jobs out there on the UTMB website right now. Any one of those fields, this would be um, an ideal time for you to go to UTMB.jobs, see what they have, and apply for every position that you see that you qualify for. Um, and you never know what may happen. So. To all my healthcare professionals who just graduated, all my students, you may have graduated last year and you're just wanting some change, looking for different jobs. Again, for LVNs, I saw 10, 15 jobs out there um, that you can apply for as long as you're flexible, you're keeping your mind open about where you work, what you want to do. Um, there's opportunities out there for you. So that's, and again, 38,000 to 57,000. So if you start somewhere 40, $41,000 a year with just your one year certification, that's a great starting space. An awesome starting space with benefits. Yes. So, so Dr. Mills won the award today for coming yes. in with kind of the, the highest wage the position. The highest wage position. So yay. Well, my LVNs, I always say our yes. nurses are doing great out there. Well, my LVNs are doing really, really well out yes. there. So Dr. Mills, that was wonderful. My next job, our, our fourth job to talk about is a position with the city of Lamarck. Um, it's that they're looking for a finance specialist with someone that's got an associate's degree in business administration. The salary is $16.42 an hour. Applications are available at www.cityoflamarck.org. So, this finance specialist, the description is they'll assist in any or all the facets of finance mainly but not limited to accounts payables, procurement, and the general ledger. Uh, they're looking for someone with an associate's degree in business or a related field of one or two years of municipal experience. So again, if you've got that associate's degree, I think it's gonna kind of put you at the top of the heap. Uh, you have to have, they're looking for someone with a general knowledge of office accounting methods and procedures, the ability to organize and effectively process and maintain financial records and files, and repair reports for management. This individual's got to have the ability to analyze and record information and balance figures. And again, you just go to the website and complete that application. Um, and so to summarize, they're looking for someone that will work in finance, accounts payable, procurement, internal audits, and the general ledger. 
Um, you've got, you'll be doing duties such as processing and scanning vendor invoices, um, completing check requests and POs every week, reconciling the uh, monthly vendor statements for payment processing, and assisting with inquiries regarding accounts payable, purchase orders, requisitions, encumbrances, invoices, and other uh, related areas. So I'm just listing a few of the duties and responsibilities, but if you go online, um, you can look. There's um, many, many, many uh, duties and responsibilities involved in, in this job. So great opportunity, I think, for our associate degree students, students that are earning that business and an associate's degree in business with the City of Lamarck as a finance specialist. That's an awesome opportunity. Thank you. Okay. So um, hopefully these jobs help someone. Um, if there are students out there and you've taken any of these jobs, you've applied, you've gotten a job, please let us know. We want to highlight you. Um, letting, you know, who's hiring? We don't just want to come to you giving jobs we really want this to be impactful we want this to be helping our students so if you benefited from this segment this series please please let us know so we're going to move on and we always end with the career tip yes um so the career tip don't forget that we are currently in registration season for the fall and so all of our students out there if you have not registered now is the time to register um due to COVID 19 we are doing some things differently for the fall, and our career tip is going to be surrounded um, around our five new instruction methods. So we've had a lot of publicity out there with the five new instruction methods that Galveston College will be offering for the fall. And really quickly, these are the five options that you can choose to take your courses in the fall. The first is you can choose face-to-face, so we have some courses being offered face-to-face -face for our students who really want to be in the classroom. We have a combination of face-to-face -face and Zoom. So you'll be doing half face-to-face, -face, half Zoom meetings. We have a combination of face-to-face -face and traditional online. So Zoom is where you will be um, present. There will be a meeting time, traditional online. You're not necessarily present, but you do have your deadlines. So you'll have face-to-face, -face, and that's what we call a traditional hybrid course. Face-to-face, uh, -face, traditional online. And then we have full Zoom classes. So you'll be meeting at a specific time on Zoom uh, with that instruction instructor. We have traditional online instruction. And then we have a combination of all the options. So those are the ways that you may uh, see your instruction being facilitated throughout the fall semester. It is up to you to go to the class schedule to locate the class and determine you know what classes fit your specific method that you require for the fall. So our, our tips, our career tip today is we want to assist you and give you four tips on how you can balance your work life and your academic life. I always say that the balance of work life, academic life, 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 social life, um, that is the greatest obstacle that you're going to have to overcome when we talk about academic success in higher education, is you have to know how to balance school with life. Um, and if you can do that, most of the time you'll be successful, but you have to go to class too and do your work. But that balance is a big part. So we want to talk to you about how do you balance this work life and how do you balance your school life so that you can be academic successful. The first tip that I have for you is with the five instruction methods, choose the best method for you. Okay? So if you're a student um, and you work 40 hours a week, and you know that I am not going to be successful in a fully online course because I forget stuff all the time, right? I need to have somebody look at me and hold me accountable. I need a time, I need a day. Then don't choose an online course. If you know that an online course is not your best instruction method, don't choose that. So 
So my first tip is we have to choose instruction methods that work best for Okay, that's the first tip is choosing a you can blend easily with your work life as well as your learning style. That's going to take you so um, far when it comes to academic success in your course. You don't want an instruction method that just doesn't fit with your life. Choose the best option for you. And thank, thankfully, we have five instruction methods going on for the fall. So choose the best option for yourself. That's my first tip. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mills. That's so, so important. Um, so what I'm going to talk a little bit about is, just as a follow-up to what Dr. Mills was saying, is how critical it is to manage your time well. Um, you really have to make a concerted effort not to overextend yourself. You need to be organized. And what I suggest is um, use a daily yes. planner like this. They're always available to you when the semester starts. Mm -hmm. and I use a daily planner in my office all the time. And the other thing, if you've got the opportunity and can get a large wall uh, calendar to put yes. up, I've got that in my mm -hmm. office as well where I can kind of do a quick glance and see what I've got going on during the day. I keep a calendar that I can actually yes. write in, like the big box calendars yes. where I'm writing in the days. Yes. You know, not just a small space, but I need a big chunk for a day. Exactly. Yeah. So take advantage of handbooks, wall calendars, and incorporate that into your day. Uh, research indicates that students um, really can get a lot of benefit from a 90-minute study session mm -hmm. and so I wanted to encourage students to think about that as they're organizing their day that if you can set aside a block where you're not going to be interrupted where you can turn the TV off um, research indicates that you can be extremely productive in a 90-minute block um, make efficient use of your time so I was reading, for example, if you're, you're going to the laundromat to do your laundry, take, some, take your books and do some reading there. Or if you've got some re review questions to complete, uh, incorporate that into those things that you have to do, those activities of daily living that we all have to tackle. If, you know, you certainly can't do this now when it's so hot, but um, in the fall when it cools down or in the winter, if you need to the, go to the library and you want to get some exercise, jog to the library. Mm -hmm. And then you'll um, get to the library and be alert and uh, kind of in a prime situation again to, um, to do whatever you need to do, research. Um, study at the library as well. So and the, the, one of the most important things I think Dr. Mills will agree is you've got to have the ability to say no. Yes, yes. If a friend asks you to babysit for example or to take care of their dog and you already know from your student planner that your day is full, that your week is full, we really support students in learning to, to say no when necessary. And then the other thing I was going to suggest is make to-do list and prioritize the task on your to-do list. And I made one for us today so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm a big to-do list person. I am too. I have them everywhere. Um, if we go through this book, it's just all to-do. Yeah. These are all my to-do lists. Um, that I have and I keep them for the different things that I have yeah. and, I, and I have to have my to-do list in writing like I have to see my own handwriting yes. and my own scratches on my to-do list. And that's how Dr. Mills and I start. We, yes. we always begin yes. with kind of an organized list, of how, to -list for today. of how we're <laughs> going to proceed during a session with you because we want this to be valuable to yes. you. So for example, and, and the other thing I like about this is when you're 
finish school and you go out into the work world and you're interviewing, if you let your employer know that you've got kind of a systematic way yes. of, of attacking tasks that need to be done, you can use this when you go to work. So for example, I put today's day, A reflects things that have to be done today, mm -hmm. B reflects things that you would like to do today, and C um, are items that you want to do, but if, if you run out of time, they can be moved to your list for the following day. So it's, it's a great way to learn how to prioritize, and again, a great way to talk to potential employers about um, how you organize your day. So for example, things that have to be done today, studying for a history test tomorrow, getting a lab report that's due in by five o'clock today, um, completing an English assignment that's due also, say, five o'clock in the afternoon. Um, on the B side, the things that you, that you want to do to prepare an outline for your psychology class, to make a call to Workforce Solutions, to follow up on your cost obligation or a book voucher, for example. And then see the things that you'd like to do that but can be moved. Do laundry, get to the computer lab, get a haircut. And what, what um, everyone suggests when I was reading about this and refreshing my memory is scratch off things mm -hmm. as you have completed them. And then um, the things that you're not able to do, then that will move to your list and move to the A or B position for the following day. That's really good. So That's very systematic. Now, my to-do yes. lists are not that systematic. <laughs> uh, they're just kind of what I do. Um, so don't think you have to be so systematic, but this is a great because I learned something from this because when I don't complete my to-do list, I'm very hard on myself. So maybe I should split it up to those that really think those things I really have to do Absolutely. and those things that, okay, don't feel so bad if, you know, you don't do them. Um, but I am not that systematic. <laughs> I'm just trying to scratch them off. Yeah. As long as they get done, that's what we want to do. So right? I, wanted, I wanted to share this because I think it is a great way to operate as yes. a student, but it's also a wonderful way to operate when you're an employee and your employer will appreciate this type of thoughtfulness. Exactly, exactly. As you can see, Sharon's very organized <laughs> over there. I'm just like, let me give you the facts. <laughs> let me give you what's important. But as long as you get the work done, that's that's what we're trying to teach you. You got to get the work done. That's good. That was good Thank stuff. Thank you. Good okay, stuff. tip three. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Tip three. All right, so before I move on into the coordinator position here at Galveston College, um, a lot of you know me from counseling and advising. Um, and tip three, this is one of the biggest things when I was in counseling and advising that I would talk to students about, and it's really balancing um, the course load with your home life, right? Um, so we know a lot of students, you know, you want to rush, you want to take, you know, full time all the time, or you're, you know, trying to get as much of your schooling paid for, so you want your maximum financial aid, and so you think, I'm going to go for this 12 hours, I'm going to go for this 15 hours, but you're also working 40 hours a week, you have two little babies at home, mm -hmm. um, and we know schools are going more into virtual instruction, even for the kids, and we got to make sure the kids are doing their homework, you're doing your homework, you're doing the work that you need to do at work work so that you can pay the bills and you find yourself starting really really good you know you start the semester really good that first two weeks because what we know is semesters always start slow and midway through somewhere they just pick up and go so fast and I've seen this so many times where students be, they're gung-ho at the beginning and by the end they have come in and they have dropped half of their course schedule what I want you to think about as a student is from the beginning, how do I balance my home life and my workload? When you're making your schedule, we really want to make our schedules based on the fact that we want to be academically successful. 
the goal is not to take a thousand classes at one time and it's not a thousand usually it's four to five the goal is not to take four to five classes at one time and then by the end of the semester i only ended up with two we really need to be thinking should i just have started with two from the beginning i don't want withdrawals on my transcript i don't want too many withdrawals you know i don't want to be failing i don't want to be inconsistent I would rather a student take two classes a semester, work their full-time job and be successful at it, take care of their kids and be successful at it, and pass those two classes than taking four and five classes and withdrawing every single semester. That is not wise, it's not the smart thing to do, and it shows that you're not thinking about how to balance your course load with your work life at the beginning. It shows that we're not having what I call foresight. You have to have um, some type of foresight is thinking about things in the long term. We're not just thinking about today, but we're thinking about things in the long term. You want to have foresight to know every semester starts out slow. Every semester is going to pick up midway, and I'm going to have finals all at once. I'm going to have papers, and I'm going to have tests. But your work is still going to be your work, especially if you're working 40 hours a week. If you are working at your job full time, 40 hours a week, I do not suggest that you take four to five classes. Mm -hmm. I suggest that you take anywhere from two to three classes, unless if you're in HVAC or you're welding, those are block schedules, so you know exactly what you're going to be doing. But other than that, if you have the opportunity to balance your work schedule with your school schedule, then you should be doing that. Taking two classes a semester and passing those is much more consistent and you will actually get done faster than taking four classes a semester and dropping two. Because in dropping two, now you begin to really affect your financial aid. You get yourself in SAP trouble, right? You get begin to affect your GPA. You are allowed six drops after six drops. You can be penalized after having those six withdrawals on your record. And so you begin to get yourself in more trouble and you think in the beginning that you're helping because it's going quicker. You're actually hurting yourself. So I want you to balance and have some foresight. Plan this out. Talk to your advisors. You know, what do they suggest you take? And sometimes they're not trying to kill your dreams. They're really trying to assist you in balancing the load, you know, balancing life, balancing your home, and balancing school. Again, the students who are successful, they have a grip on this school life and home life balance. The other thing in regards to home life balance is I tell students carve out a space, um, and Ms. Pagan. She kind of hinted on this, yeah. home and, and school life balance, carve out a specific space that's your school space. And so a lot of you are doing work from home. And begin this practice with your children. You know, carving out a specific space, this is my school space. So when you sit there, your brain and your body already connects to each other, knowing that we're getting ready to do something, you know, academic. Same thing for your children. They shouldn't be doing their work all over their all over the house. We have a specific chair. We have a specific desk. This is where we sit, and this is where we tackle all of our academic work. And I know when I go there, it's time to get serious, time to breathe, and do the work that I need to do. Carve out a space for yourself, and make sure that the individuals in your house. Some I know if your house is like mine, it can be loud and rowdy sometimes. Make sure the individuals in your house. They know when you go to that space, I'm going to be there for 90 minutes. We talked about 90 minutes. Yes. I'm going to be there for 90 minutes. It's my time. You can go watch three TV shows. That's what your 90 minutes is. Go watch three TV shows. You already got your snack. Don't bother me. I'm doing my work. Carve out that space for yourself. And the more you do that consistently, the more the family will know, okay, she's serious. Don't play with her. Don't play with him. She's trying to get her work done. Yes. So that's my second tip is think from the beginning about your course load. So if we're working 40 hours a week, we should be taking two to three classes. But also, how do I balance my home by carving out spaces, by letting everybody know this is what I'm doing, having silent time, 
You want to really balance those. Um, and I'm telling you, doing this, if you can go on campus, if we're open for campus, we really don't know how open we're going to be, but I would always tell my students, don't leave campus until you've finished all your work. So that's a good tip too for the balance is, don't even go home. Stay on campus as long as you can, go to the library, come to the Student Success Center, and that way when you go home, you don't have to worry about work because you did it all before you left the building, right? So don't even go home. I was that student. I could not go home until I finished all my work. I have to do work in the library. I, I just had to. If I wasn't in the library, say when I wrote my dissertation, I was always in the library midnight, two in the morning, because I could only think in the library, you know? I couldn't go home because somebody's pulling at me. They want me to cook, clean, do all that, you know? <laughs> so balance, balance that work-life load. Great, great, great ideas for the, the students to um, incorporate into their plan. I love that about using the library and the Student Success Center that's available to everyone that's a Galveston College student. So we're going to end with talking about the last tip, which is to study sm smart. And again, studying smart has a lot to do with time management. It's all about organizing your time. So before you start to study, make a plan. Decide exactly what you want to get done and the order and that you're going to do the different tasks that you have. That's a to-do list. Yes, another to-do list. And, and be specific. That's so important that you decide you are going to commit to reading pages 125 through 150 and you're going to do, do the review questions at the end of the chapter. So that's what I'm talking about. When you create a plan, you've got to be that specific. And uh, the other thing that I suggest is that you always allow for more time than you think you're going to yes. need um, to be on the safe side. If you have something to memorize, work on that first. Put that at the very front of your list. Then the tip is to go over it again at the end of your study session. And, and you know what, what I think a lot of students don't understand when they're coming into college, I know that, that students, I've had this discussion with students at the Applied Technical Center, they feel like if they go to class, that's, that's adequate. If no. they spend that time in class, then they should earn a good grade. And if, as Dr. Mills just said, it's what you do outside of class. Yes. Being in class is a given. Yes. But it's what you do outside of class. And so make sure that you've got time to do some work initially and then to do review work at the, you know, you, that you fit that in in those 90 minute study sessions. Uh, do your difficult assignments first when you're fresh and alert. Take regular short breaks. Get a drink. Get up and stretch. Do a downward dog if you're a yoga person like me. Or go for a 10-15 minute walk. Take a, take a little, get some a little, literal, literally fresh air. Um, and know, it's, it's, again, as Dr. Mills was saying, it's so important for you to get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. And some students study best at night. Other students are more focused during the day and so or in the morning. So know when you're at your best and organize your day so that you're able to study when you find yourself most productive. Yes. And I wanted just to end with this quote. I, I love this. Um, as a general rule, the more senses you involve and the wider variety of methods you use while studying, the more you're going to remember. And this is a quote I'm going to share with you um, that was said by William Glasser, who's an expert in the field of education. And he said, students learn 10% of what they read 20% of what they hear, so again, the advantage of a study group mm -hmm. sometimes, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they see and hear, 70% of what is discussed with others, 
again, the benefit of those study groups, and 80% of what they experience personally when you're doing lab time. Um, and 90 95% of what you have the opportunity to teach someone else. I, I was hoping it ended on that. Thank you, yes. thank you. So, so just, just things to think yes. about so that you can study smart. Yes. And, and I was hoping it ended on that because that's one of my number one rules is participation and being able to teach what you learn. Yes. So if you can teach what you learn, um, and one of the ways that even in reading, and when we talk about studying, reading, academic success, we know comprehension is a big thing. Um, and mm -hmm. I see, you know, students make this mistake a lot of the time is that they read the book and they're trying to memorize the words on the book. Um, that is not really what we should be doing and what true education is. We should be reading. We, I read once just to go through and kind of get over those words and then I read again for some understanding, right? I read again for understanding and then I read a third time to make sure that what I think my understanding is is really what's being said and then close the book, right? Close the book, put it to the side and start writing what you think you read. And start teaching yourself, putting it in your own words. This is what I think they are saying. These are some implications of what they are saying. And then go try to teach somebody what you just learned. And then go back to what you read and see if you got that teaching right. Right? 95% of the time, yes. if you can teach what you've learned, you're going to pass the test. You're going to. It's because you know it. It's in you. It, it's going to come out in your, if you can teach it, it comes out in your own words. It's not just you taking the book and what the book is thinking. You can begin to elaborate on it and then you have papers to write. It's easy to write a two-page paper about something I can teach because I know where to elaborate it, right? Exactly. So I totally agree and I say Thank that you. to my students all the time. Group work is really good because it allows you the opportunity to teach. And if you can teach it, then you know it and you can pass the class. And maybe one day you'll become the teacher of that class. Who knows? That's Who knows? right. Who knows? We, you know, that the um, department head of welding technology at the, applied, um, at the Applied Technical Center is James Love. Yes. And he is a Galveston College graduate. Look. I'm sure he was in groups, in labs. I'm sure he was that student teaching the other students. Yes. I'm sure to become the director of the department, you have to be that student who's teaching other students. You mm -hmm. just have He's to be. He's phenomenal. He that. is. Yes. I love Ms. Love. Shout out to Ms. Love. <laughs> Shout out to Ms. Love. Yes. Okay. So we helped you. Is that it? Is that that's the end of those career tips? Um, mm -hmm. So again, we want you to choose the best option for yourself when it comes to the instruction. We want you to manage your time. Balance your course, work, life, load, and think about study skills and how you study, the best ways for you to study. Those are our career tips for today. Um, thank you for joining us. This is our fifth, was it fifth or sixth? I think, We're losing yes, out. yes. Fifth Who's Hiring episode. Um, and the summer series is almost over, guys. Next uh, time we come to you we, will be August 5th. Yes. And that will be the last edition of the summer series. Yes. So that's the last edition of the summer series, August 5th. Um, again, send us some comments. Let us know what you think, if this is helpful, beneficial. Um, if you can get to us in time, maybe you can be the person to give us our next career tip. Yes. Uh, if you have some jobs, if what, what are you looking for? What jobs are you looking for? And maybe we can try to find a job for you. Send us a comment on that. Uh, we've enjoyed you all. We've enjoyed each other. I've enjoyed working with Miss Pagan. And I feel the same. Yes. It's been so much fun. Mm -hmm. Highlight of highlight of my <laughs> week is when I get to do, be with Dr. Mills. So we hope you enjoyed. Catch us for our last edition of the Summer Series, August 5th. Thank you for staying tuned. And happy Whitecaps Wednesday.